All right, so we are at the location and we are getting ready. Ward's back there getting his tools together. And we got Christian here getting his stuff together. We got Joel all ready to go. And we're going to go out and do something that a lot of people say is stupid. But it is what it is. Here we go. That week was probably one of the most interesting I've ever experienced. The entire week was like a slow descent into madness. My name is Christian B. Roper. I am an investigation filmmaker. So when I get a call from Tony saying, hey, there's a story that's pretty interesting. I think I might want to, to investigate it and document some of this. I did not exactly know what I was getting into and that landed me in the passenger seat with someone who had claimed to see basically a werewolf. Uh, my first encounter was actually hunting with dogs and the reason why I feel compelled to tell my story is to give tribute to my dogs. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm not the only one that's been that close to them. I know I'm not. There's too many people in the world that can be that has been that close to a dog man. I can't say about other cryptids, but that has been that close to a dog man. You're familiar with the. Uh... Turn that camera around if you're going to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> no. <I'm funny. laughs> um... The astrological significance of the end of the age of Pisces, the dawning of the age of Hi, I'm Ward Heide. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I didn't really have that much interest in the paranormal or fringe topics prior to a couple of years ago when a story kind of fell into my lap. You're talking about okay, something's changing. I, I know I, I said this to you before, Ward. Yeah. Talk to me like I'm in fifth grade. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, that's my, my way of saying no. So please um, tell. <laughs> so we're here in Kentucky to do this project with a former podcast guest, episode 335, Dog vs. Dog Man, on the Confessionals podcast. I assembled a team together to come down here and look for the Dog Man. As soon as I entered Kentucky... I realized how rural this area was. Once I saw a sign on the road saying, Welcome to Daniel Boone National Forest, I still had an over an hour drive to get to the cabin of where I'm staying in the forest. This is an extremely vast place. Like, we hear about these sightings, right? And a lot of sightings happen at night with cryptids. And so, why not go out there and put yourself in the environment that people are running into these things? You know, I don't think these things are strictly nocturnal, but, you know, why not? People go out looking for Bigfoot at night. Let's go look for Dogman at night. It's uh, a little more scary in the sense of what you hear about these creatures and how vicious they can be. Uh, but we'll be all right. I trust we'll be all right. What do you think, Joel? My name is Joel Thomas. Kentucky's been a wild ride. We saw some things that we couldn't believe and left here with an impression that I'll never forget. It's not like I'm not nervous about it, you know? <laughs> like, like it, it's something that I, I am. I'm nervous about it. I mean, it, like, just walking around the woods at night can be a little nerve wracking. I mean, you don't know what's out there. Uh, for instance, in Pennsylvania, they, they swear, they're like, nope, there's no, uh, there's no mountain lions in Pennsylvania. Yet we have game cam uh, pictures after game cam pictures showing mountain lion in Pennsylvania, which, right. is a, which is, can be a, a very nerve wracking thing knowing that they're out there in Pennsylvania. And, um, 
And then not to mention the Bigfoot, the Dog Man, like the woods that the forest that we went to recently, me and my brother. I mean, it's a haunted forest that has lots of Bigfoot activity, Dog Man activity. You just don't know what's out there. And then you're walking through, like I'm six feet, and you're walking through grass that's two feet taller than you. You don't know what's on the other side of that. Right. You know. Correction, and they so it's a little nerve wracking walking. Right here's where I had my second encounter at, and this this cliff right here to the left of me is uh, is where the second one climbed straight up right here. And at that point, there were no trees like there are here now. It was just like a cliff. You guys want to walk this out real quick? Down there? He wouldn't move. Oh, it, it, go all the way around to, I can take you step by step to where, how it all happened. Yeah. You guys down for that? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's go. Oh, yeah. Watch for rattlesnakes and copperheads. You know, the area is the vast. smell of cucumber. The forest is vast and it's old. And one difference between central Kentucky where we were and where I grew up is uh, most of where I've grown, where I grew up, most of West Virginia is has been logged out. So it's been timbered. And some of these areas that we ended up going to in central Kentucky are it's ancient timber. Um, as far as cameras go, you want to pass them down? Like I go down and pass them down instead of you climbing down with the camera? Uh, I'm okay. Okay, just let me know if you need a hand or go. I freaking love this place. I mean, my, my dad, with this class here, is a little bit wider than that. But my father and I, we would turn loose our dogs at the top of the hill there where, where we just park, and we'd start them down this way, and we always walk on it, meaning that we would we would walk in a certain, certain way, and our dogs would hunt these big circles in the area to see if they could smell anything. And if you keep going that way, you go up towards cabin. But if you go straight down this hill, you go straight down to the to the lake. And so if our dogs went far enough down the hill and they got trees where a raccoon would be, and it's close enough to the bottom of the hill, we could walk back up to our vehicles and drive the vehicles back down to the On day one, Kyle took us out to a location where he saw a dog man. And on that location, we found a print, a very large canine print. There is a pad right here. See that right here? Circles around right here. Yeah. See? So I think we're right in here. Yeah, right here's right the, here. the back pad. It comes around. Toe, toe. That's in huge. Hearing the stories about Slewfoot, yeah, I didn't know what to think at first. Oh my gosh! In hearing the conviction with which you spoke, the moments we were in the car, the moments we were able to go out and help him really get over his fear of the woods that he's had ever since those moments. You could feel the You could see it in his eyes and oftentimes his actions that he was very serious about having seen something. And after leaving Kentucky, I am in no doubt that Kyle witnessed something. It's one of the biggest prints I've ever seen. I know we talked about it could have been a cougar, maybe Black Panther, even though they say those aren't here. But a lot of people who have been in the woods have seen those things. So that's a possibility. But I will say it was massive. And Kyle didn't know what it was. So there's a good chance that it could have been something that we were out here looking for. You're better at looking at this way better than me. How, how wide is it? Is it just long? Like, or? You got your toes right here. Okay. And your pad back here, which my hands are small, but still. That's huge. Because right here, look. Oh, wow. Yeah. You, you can feel it whenever you put your hands in it. Yeah, yeah. you can feel it right in here, the toes. You can feel it. 
<laughs> that is nuts. So it's not like, I guess you what you give so them the basics and then they kind of learn from actually doing it. What was that? This. Did you see the tree yep. over there? Yeah, the, the whole tree fell down. Yeah. It stopped and grabbed a hold of old Jake with both hands and threw him through the woods. I mean, threw him through the woods, and I seen his body flying hitting low hanging tree branches and limbs and and debris in the woods and that's it that's it I, I, that's when i realized that's it he killed my dog this dog man has killed my dog it's just me and the monster i ain't got nobody in the world that could save me because there's no way that he's alive after that this area is extremely vast and dense filled with wildlife and who knows what else Mm. It does look like a face. Figure it out. You're talking about right, right there on yeah, the left right side? Uh, it's just close to that, that 70 foot set forward. Around that way. And so you, you hear the, the rustling. Side. I hear I hear rustling down there in the ditch. And the dogs are coming up behind you. Yeah, they're, they're still back milling around behind me looking, you know, looking for a track. And as I come up here, and I'm shining my light down here, I see it. And I walk out in the road, someplace there where that tall, if you look at the skyline here, uh -huh. someplace or, or near that tallest leaf that's sticking out that's like on the side of the, the hill there. Yeah. Someplace right in there. It, it's right down in there and it comes right out into the middle of the road almost. And I'm shining my light. I was up here a little further than that in the ditch. Cause I walked out a little bit and it didn't, it didn't move from the ditch as I walked out. And I shine my light and it steps, steps right out in the middle of the road. And I'm shining my light 40, 50 yards. And my dogs walk up behind me and it, whenever it steps out, it turns a quarter turn towards me. Cause it didn't walk directly out and jump directly out facing me. It's a quarter turn towards me whenever I'm shining my light on it. As I'm shining my light on it, and it's looking at me and I'm looking at it, a dog walks up behind me and you hear his toenails clicking on the ground behind me. He walks up right next to me. And as he walks up right next to me, he doesn't move, he just stands there and he sees it and it sees us. It's down in. What do you think is in that cave? Do you think it's a possibility that while you were over there, it came through and you just didn't notice it? It had to because I drove out here, I drove through here park. And then by the time I was down there hunting, you know, which it wasn't a straight walk like we walked through, even though we stopped and everything. I, as I'm walking through there hunting, I stop and once my dog leaves my vision, and I sit there and wait and listen for them to, if they're after a track or something, I don't know until they bark. So sometimes they'll go check out different tracks, possums, whatever, and just check them. But if, if it's not what they're after, they won't open up, they won't bark on it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was waiting on. So the time it took me to get around there. So within my first few minutes of being in the car with Kyle, I was not expecting the believability factor to be very high, but I was shocked. This guy, um, he's the type of guy, you know, you always hear the saying, but he would offer you the shirt off of his back. I found him to be very nice, very uh, welcoming. I, I didn't have any experience doing anything in Appalachia before, but he was so welcoming, and I heard stories uh, just deeply rooted in the, the hills and hollers of Kentucky. And with that came stories of not only uh, his own sightings, he had cousins that had their own sightings. He had neighbors, he had other family members with their own sightings of uh, what I would call high strangeness. And oftentimes it was of the exact same creature and that is known to the area as Slewfoot. It said that sundown is going to be in about 20 minutes. It doesn't look like it's going to be dark in 20 minutes, so that's my bad. Okay. Tell you what, man. Tree 
these fall down right here on top of your vehicle. Some of them are so big, you'd go on to baby Jesus. I've walked those creeks out years ago running dogs. Because, I mean, if it's dry out, those raccoons, once they run through water or something like that, they put off more scent. to make sure that the uh, that the gate is open. I think it's a great idea. Ten four. Because if not, if that gate's not open, then it's gonna be a long, long hike. Long hike. Which everybody seems to be in pretty good shape besides me, so. You know the land the best, though. Huh? You know the land the best. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's a gravel road, but the only, the only reason I could think that it would be locked right now, that road right there, there's a bunch of caves up there in those cliffs, a bunch of them, that little pull-off spot, a whole big bunch of caves in the, in the cliffs. Is that a spot caves. we need to check out? If you all want to walk in there, I mean, it's straight up and down once you get to the very end of the trail. It's, I mean, you can see that mountain. There. So, this creature that you saw, where does it live? What, what, what's... I don't know. I don't know if it lives in caves or just in the land, uh, on the land. I don't know if it travels through caves, if it's a part of... There is a big cave system in Kentucky. I mean, you have to think Mammoth Caves is 400 and some odd miles long of underground caverns. So, there very well could be cave systems up here that lead from one, one part of Kentucky into another for all I know. to check to see if that gate was unlocked but usually then they unlock it in October and then it gets locked again in February. If it's not unlocked, um, we'd have to get an early start and walk in the rain tomorrow. And I really would rather not walk in there. But, I mean, it came all this way. Let's go back to the cab and we'll talk there. Yeah, because it, it ultimately, nighttime investigation is at, at the first location would be more of a symbolic gesture than this gives us the, our best chance. Because it's not like if we go there, it's like okay, this is the best chance we have. It's just it's just where you first saw yeah. it, and it's the most dramatic. So it would have been good. It have been good for you know what we're doing if we were able to do a nighttime investigation at the location, but if we can't, there's no shortage of options. And where my first encounter took place versus where my second encounter took place, it's not a huge distance. I mean, we've seen that. Yeah. So just because you can't go in there at night and, and do an investigation and set up stuff doesn't mean you can't do it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And we have that track in the second location and which it could be a it could be a cougar and it could be a dog man yeah you know none of us know right now um but see what it looks like tomorrow okay i'm sorry man i swear no I dude don't be sorry i didn't know dude don't be sorry no if i would have known then i still would have came seriously don't be sorry about that sucks. Don't be sorry with that. If you if you're if you're willing to hike, I'm willing to hike. These guys I'm sure are willing to hike. I mean I'd say I don't know just, about Joel, but I'd say we just gauge it by when we get down there tomorrow during the daytime. If it's locked and we walk it and we feel like it's not that big of a distance, 
Hey, listen, I'm gonna do whatever. I'll go out there. I'll walk there out at night and it's two miles if we need to. I don't care. Now, that, what y'all do at night is up to you, but, right. but I mean. Maybe we do that the second yeah. day, you know what I mean? Like maybe if it's locked, then we walk out there tomorrow, check it out during the daytime, come back and do the nighttime stuff at the second location. Mm -hmm. But maybe the next day we plot, you know what, let's do this track and let's do it at night out of the first. Cause I know you're, I know you're down to do that, and I, I think I would totally do it. So I mean, you came all this way, but you also need to consider if you go out to where I had my first encounter at, and you set up calls, and you bring it in, and not having an a quick not escape, not having no quick escape, then it's either shoot or get eaten. Yeah, I don't know what I expected to see that night. I know that. It felt very heavy. I mean, we just heard these stories, you know, so you get out in the woods at night and anyway, there's just that primal, you don't know what's out there that's always with you. Oh god. Well, the killer bee. Is this in? I don't know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's in here? I just saw you. It is? Oh, there it is right there in the corner. Right there. Oh. <laughs> Open the window. Get out. No, it's not. <laughs> 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 On day one, the first night, we were driving back to our cabin and I had come around a corner and the bright whites on my pickup truck picked up what looked like a white figure walking across the road. It looked like almost it was a canine, maybe a fox, maybe a coyote, but it was pure white yeah. and I wasn't the only one that saw it. And when we stopped to get the spotlight out to check into the woods, chaos unfolded. Giant hornets flew into the truck. I jumped across the passenger seat out of the truck. We all bailed. It was crazy. Murder hornet, then something white comes out of here. Yeah. I thought something moved through the truck. That's what I thought. That's what I thought too. <laughs> yeah, I think they like the lights. He did not know how serious we were about getting to the spot. And we asked him, you know, how long is this hike? And he says, it's six miles in. And we say, okay, it's going to be a long day. And on that second day, I had one of the strangest experiences of my entire life, perhaps the strangest I'll ever have. Um, it's one of those I haven't really opened up about, um, except for a handful of people. <sighs> that six mile road. Um, so yeah, we're going to hit up the spot today where Kyle had his first encounter and hopefully the gate is open and we can get in there because we're leaving in the morning to get there and if it's not open we're hiking and we really don't want to do that because Kyle said it is far back but if we if we can hike in, even if it's like a two, three hour hike in, and we do our stuff out there and then hike back, we'll still have time to to get out before it gets dark for Kyle. And then once we know where it's at, we can hike in ourselves at night and do stupid things that people say we'll regret. 
Everybody in? Yes. No regrets. Yeah. We were hiking in. And it was all five of us. You know, the four crew, you know, Joel and, and Ward were armed. Tony was armed. I, myself, just had a camera and a metal detector. There's a left curve before the fork ends. On day two, we were hiking to a location where Kyle thought we'd have a great chance to have an encounter with a dog man. And when we got to this location, he and I decided to hike up to find a water tank that's in the woods to feed these animals. And just as we started hiking up, two of my team members, they were shocked and called us back immediately. It was crazy because I, I heard it and I saw it shake and I say, Christian, you see that? And right when I said that, it shook again. We're talking about that whole area shook. It was a massive area shook. How you feeling? I'm in the right place. As that's happening, I'm coming around the bend, I cross over the area where the creek's at, and I look up and I see a area of bushes and large trees that start shaking. And I'm kind of wondering, is this me that's seeing this? Maybe I'm losing my mind. So I turn back around and I look at Christian. I'm glad somebody else saw it. Or was it just me seeing it? Because Christian looked like this. We hear it again, I whip around. There is a massive, even bigger than the first one I saw, area that's shaking. And we're talking big trees, I would say probably about this big, maybe bigger, that are shaking from the bottom with a probably five to seven yard width. And I take a look back and see the three guys on all fours starting to crawl up this, you know, steep incline in this, in this um, ridge. Oof. And on my left side, I start to hear something. And I can tell it's a tr it's the branches of a tree. It's it's rustling, but it's a lot of rustling. A few meters up, maybe 20, 25 feet up, there's an oval. There's an oval gap between the first layer of trees and the layer behind that. And that's where the movement was. The first trees were not moving. The second layer of trees I see rustling at the top. And it doesn't make sense to me. I see the rustling, I see it through the oval. The, the trees in front aren't moving. And I just, nothing had, I haven't been able to rationalize any of that at that time. It was just, you know, some light rustling with the trees behind. <laughs> but it was somewhat loud. I look back and I'm like, you guys didn't hear that? And I look back and as I look back through that oval, I could tell it was two or three isolated trees. Nothing behind that, nothing in front. 
two or three isolated trees were violently shaking. You see the trees get pushed off to the side and it's only two or three behind this first layer of trees. And we are so close to them. Ward's coming up the back end because he hears us saying there's something going on. As we get down, uh, Kyle starts having uh, some feelings of anxiety. So he kind of walks away. We talk to Tony, we decide that Christian and I are gonna split up. So Christian and I decide to go around the corner. Uh, we definitely felt a heaviness uh, drop over us. I was, I thought I was, I was gonna see a freaking elephant come out of the woods. I swear, I thought it was like, maybe a deer or something. But then like the second time, it was like, oh man, I'm so glad you saw that. I thought it didn't look like an idiot. <laughs> like, I just didn't see anything at all. I was expecting to see everyone else turned around, Dude, wondering what it was. Mess. It was loud. And I guess, Tony and Kyle and the what was that? That was probably the quietest forest I had ever heard after that. The week after, I was filming another project, um, and I was with a friend, and we were watching TV, but a message comes through in our group chat from War, and he says, basically, so this is what you guys saw. And it was a video, and I'm not sure as to, you know, the validity of this one. It could be easily explained. I have no clue. But in that moment when I witnessed what was captured on video, I start, I start tearing up. I... I start tearing up and I start shaking. You know, my breath gets really shallow. I can't even focus. I feel like I'm having like a panic attack. Um, and it wasn't out of the fear that I had in that moment being brought back. It was out of excitement. It was, a, it was an emotional positive because I thought in my mind, someone else saw this too. Ha 
hike, yeah. It'll be a long hike, long walk, but not being able to get back to the safety of your vehicle to get out fast is the main threat. You know, that right there's that's it. Like you, you couldn't get out fast enough because you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to get out fast enough. If we can experience something on the level of what we saw yesterday, but have everyone witness it, I think we'll be happy. I'm just so upset not everyone saw that. Hey, but at least it was two of us, right? Like, I wish it at least it wasn't me. just me. That was the one thing I was worried about. And then it would be like, yeah, whatever. You're just making us up for the show. Well, the reason I looked back at them, those two are climbing up. I'm looking back. I'm like, you don't, you don't hear this. I thought this thing was about to come rushing out of the woods. I whistled at them because I thought something was about to attack you and I wanted them watching. Right. He wanted to watch me just get mauled. He was like, I wanted them watching me get the shit. He walked up me and I was <laughs> talking to Christian about it. I was like, do you think, because whenever we came around through there, if it was a deer with all five of us moving, he would have been gone anyway. We would have heard the hooves yeah. too, like you said. And a bear, a black bear, is even more spookier than that. Like, they would have been gone, too. And so... It was Christian's eyes. It was the size of these trees, and it was up there, and it was violently shaking. And then I, 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 was, I was thinking that maybe because me and Tony was heading in the woods. Right. Because we stood there for a little bit before, I mean, trying to decide where the water tank was. Right, right. Before we decided. So I think maybe it stood there watching us. Whenever me and Tony decided that we were going to go in the woods there in that spot to find the, the water tank. Right, right. But that's whenever we decided to get out there because we were heading in the woods. Well, it was Christian's eyes. I loved looking back and seeing his eyes. Helicopter, Tony, they know you're here. Flying low, too. This is the second time in four trips. They know you're here, Tony. Now I feel like I'm misunderstanding. Oh. You pointed at the two trees just now, and you pointed up, and you said it was shaking up there. Mm -hmm. So what, was it shaking from there, and we saw the the movement of the tree shaking at the base from up there, or was there something that you think was on the bottom shaking from the bottom, and it was shaking up there? I couldn't tell. I look up at the treetops because that's where I see the most movement. With my eyes, my gap into the tree line was where I could see the tops of the trees a few layers back into the woods. He's looking eye level down at the brush and he said that was shaking too. So, okay, so we have two different perspectives here now. We have you, you were looking up and you saw it shaking up there. You were looking down, Joel, and you saw not only the trees shaking on the bottom, but also the brush around the bottom. Correct, and it was a massive area too that was shaking. We're talking big trees from the bottom shaking plus all the brush around it. Twice though, I saw it the first time before Christian saw it. It wasn't as big, but it was still big enough for me to know something was going on up there. I look back at Christian, it starts shaking again, his eyes get huge. I look back and he and I both felt like something was about to come at us from that tree line. It, it, it looked like it was, and then it instantly stopped and there was no hoof steps, any kind of sound afterwards. It was like, if you can imagine like a massive, my first thought was elephant because I've seen safari videos of elephants bluff charging people. But you made a good point. It was like, I mean, one of the plausible things is if you get really high and you've got a huge animal, like you said, a gorilla, going from tree to tree, Tarzan style, it can probably do that to some trees. The trees were making noises themselves. That's what got me. There was some cracking in the trees and all the brush was moving and it was wet too. So it's not like you would hear every single movement in the brush. And so how loud was this for you guys? I mean, because you said, you keep saying you're so surprised that we didn't hear it. I mean, was, how loud? I think I heard it too. It was like, I, what I was expecting after this was, okay, it's, I'm, you know, it's absurd to think there's an elephant here in Kentucky. Then I'm, oh, we've come across someone doing lumber, you know, a lumber job back here and they're pulling down a tree. I didn't hear any machinery. I was like, maybe they're pulling down a tree with rope. Yeah. Okay, so. And how far off are we? 
in that, in that location like as far as we were I think miles. we were about two miles from any other person that we that we saw and not even in that parking lot was pretty remote what would you guys say about the wind? How much wind did we have yesterday? It wasn't much yeah. at all. And the the ground was damp and wet from the rain, so deers won't hardly make any any noise, and they're not going to shake any tree. Tops. I didn't see the top of the trees, so and it was shaking. I just saw the bottom, and it was the entire brush shaking with the trees. When I look back at Christian, he looks back. He's looking at the top of the trees. He didn't see anything in the top of the trees, if I'm correct. I still see the bottom shaking as if something's in the bottom either going to come at us or like you said a bluff charge at that point it ends but there's no residual brush moving like it's running off it just happened in this one area twice and then gone I think that regardless yeah. of what like specific it. evidence we found what I believe is that the world is definitely enchanted enough and weird enough to allow for something like Dogman. That's what I believe. So what we're doing is we just climbed up a mountain, came across this rock face, and now we're sitting on top of these rocks. And we just shout, howled off the coyote, wounded coyote, and we're trying to draw in a Dogman. Um, I'm gonna let it rip a couple more times. And so I wonder how many people in this area who are like Kyle before he found out that there's this whole world out there that's fascinated by it. And he was, he decided to step out on a limb and, and talk to people about it, you know, all over the world. How many more people in this area have stories like him? Well, it's like the lady at the convenience store today when we were talking about kind of what we were doing, how she just was like, oh yeah, so-and-so down the road had ran into such and such. I mean, they had a big foot like a silhouette right yes. out front yeah. of the convenience store and you could tell that everybody's pretty you know they're fascinated that we would actually go and hunt something like this down because they're like nah man like we see it but we, we just stay away essentially yeah her intonation when she was talking to us because kyle went in and he asked her he said you know does anyone else come in here with stories and um that's one thing i want to do in this area is see how far you can get chasing a lead um but her intonation and her answer was like someone came in every single week talking about something they could not explain. Like it was commonplace to her. It was very common. Wow. I, didn't, I missed that part of the conversation. So, so it was something that she was saying, locals come in and say they see stuff? Yeah. See, I was in the impression that she was talking about people like us from out of town. So you're saying that she was, because I, I didn't hear it. I wasn't in the store at the time. He, he walked in and he, he, at first he asked her, um, at, at first she was a little bit closed off because, you know, I, I think she was under the, the stereotypical framework for this area where they're, they're closed off to outsiders that knew we were outsiders. You don't, just don't talk about your way of life out here. Um, he's like, does, does anyone come in here ever, ever talking about Bigfoot? And, uh, she was like, yeah, okay, is this, is this, is this a joke? And then she realized he was serious. And then she got she got pretty stern, and she says, "Yeah, all the all the time." And just hearing it in her voice, I was like, "Okay, you know, this is this is your last." It's that's like the the gate 
that convenience store, the gate from the outside world where there's actual neighborhoods, houses and stuff, and tucked in here, it's, it's like 45 minutes from here to get to that, to uh, this gateway. And uh, so the stories that she's heard, and I can't even imagine, I didn't even listen to those right. when, when she was retelling some of those, but I, I did hear her first answer where she says, yeah, people are in here all the time describing weird stuff. Wow. Yeah, I, I when when I caught it because I was picking up you know stuff for us for later, and uh, Kyle was talking to her and she mentioned that there was a guy a week ago that came in with the sighting and I want to say it was a dogman sighting. It was something along those lines and she said basically like what you just said that people come in all the time and it didn't seem weird to her at all. Like I guess it was more uh, weird that we were actually going out looking for it essentially well i'll tell you <laughs> i don't think that's an uncommon opinion because when i started talking about coming down here i can't tell you how many people reached out to me to ask me not to do this like listeners of my show were asking me not to do this and if they if they weren't asking me not to do it they were begging me to please be careful and safe right. and one of those people is dark waters he told me i'm crazy for coming out here he said he would never do it and he highly recommended that i don't do it and then before we call him who else said the same thing kyle kyle said you're not going to catch me out in the woods and here we are going out in the woods and before we started this conversation i texted him to tell him where we're at and what we're doing right now and we're getting ready to go in the woods and he said please be careful I told him I'd text him, I'd let him know when we get back to the cabin, just so that he knows. But like, Kyle saw this thing. He won't be t caught in the woods at night. Right. Dark waters telling me, you're crazy for doing this. Listeners saying, you're crazy for doing this. Maybe we're crazy for doing this, but we're gonna do it. <laughs> and we're gonna see what happens. Let's give dark waters a call and hear what he thinks about big, or dog, Hear what he thinks about Dog Man. Uh, we brought you up in conversation because you told me that I'm crazy for doing this. Uh, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I wanted to give you a call and uh, see if you could share with us your thoughts on Dog Man because I know uh, you you have strong opinions as to what it is and uh, just kind of talk with us a little bit about that. Well, in my opinion, you got two different things. It depends on what you guys have seen. Um, so you have what I call the original, um, I call them the children of uh, the corruption that happened on this planet when the fallen angels came down here and corrupted everything that God created, which are these slender, um, upright walking wolves. Some of them look like Doberman Pinchers. Some of them look like um, Black Timberwolves. You have some of them that look like hyenas by the face. Um, and those are some of the remnants of the original ones that were here on this planet. Um, and they're still around to this day. And then you have what I like to call the genetically modified version of this animal, which is extremely aggressive, extremely big. It looks like a Bigfoot with a freaking wolf's head, except for everything is just exaggerated, stupid, to the point to where when you see people see it, they literally can't believe what they're seeing with their own eyes. Like, it's like, wait, the proportions are so big, it's like, wait, this don't make no damn sense. Not not the, simply the fact that it's a, a upright walking wolf with not like hotchins and hotchins and dog legs, but like humanoid legs. But the, it's so massive that it completely terrifies people who see it. And that particular creature, I believe, has been genetically modified um, and is just running around, roaming around in the woods and Maybe it got away. I don't know how it got there, but it's definitely not normal deal. You got to be careful. Yeah, uh, we're, we're going to try for sure. Um, and, you know, the more time has gone on with uh, looking at this topic and stuff for me recently, the more I've been more and more swayed to the uh, spiritual component more than I ever have before. Um, my assumption was that dog man of the woods was a beast and the dog demonic dog thing that people see in their homes was something totally different but recently as i talked to more and more people 
I uh, and their experiences it's kind of pushed me into this other side of thinking where I think maybe these things are much more complex than I thought and um, and the spiritual side of things when it comes to these st this stuff uh, is something that I'm strongly in, um, thinking about and considering more and more because of uh, of all the things I've been hearing it, it's just uh, I'm, I'm not feeling I'm not feeling uh, overly confident in the sense of going out in the woods tonight and that we're just you know we can handle anything um, I'm trying to go out there with more of a humble attitude of we're going to be careful we're going to do the best we can and see what happens but um, you've told me not to do this uh, Kyle the guy who brought us out here told me not to do this many people have said that and um, I just hope you uh, you forgive me for not listening to you all right so we are at the location and we are getting ready Ward's back there getting his tools together and we got Christian here getting his stuff together we got Joel all ready to go and we're gonna go out and do something that a lot of people say is stupid but it is what it is here we go seems very believable. Um, and so, you know, it, it seems like we're getting ready for action. So I'm in that mode of just hyper aware. I mean, even just when you're in the woods at night, there's always that that part of your brain that's populating the dark with the monsters, whether they're there or not. And so that's going on, plus all these stories, plus we had an encounter here the day before that's at least unexplained. I mean, it doesn't seem like a dog man, but it, it's, it's unexplained. I didn't have an explanation for it. Well, I know what happened the day before, and I know that what happened was real, and it wasn't anything that I can explain then or explain now. So to go back to that area and decide to try to lure something out, whether it's Dogman, Sasquatch, or something completely different, it was definitely made the hairs bristle on the back of my neck. There are things running through all our brains, wondering what if tonight is the night we see a dog man. Does that mean we all get to leave the forest tonight? 
or not. Long stretches of time where we didn't talk to each other. We were quiet, probably all thinking the same thing, but not wanting to say it out loud. But I definitely felt like tonight's the night that we might see something. And at one moment, we actually started hearing some crashes behind us, but not together. So you would hear something move, like something was moving behind us, and then nothing for a little while. And then, boom, it would pop up again. It was almost like whatever it was was circling us and getting closer. Explain to me what you saw. So I, I, was, I was literally just standing here like this, getting ready to loosen this up. In fact, it is a little loose. I untied the knot and I just felt like I needed to look around and figure, needed to be this right. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Joel, hang still, hang still. We got movement over here. Shaking hard, right? Uh huh. 
and then further back on it's like as far back as you can see it was back and forth i've never seen anything like that before in my life so i was i was untying this and i just felt like i need to look around because it was kind of quiet back here it still is so i just looked off to my right and from my vantage point between these trees back there's like a, a pile of dead leaves off of a branch that must have fallen and to the left of that i thought i saw almost like a gray head just above the br the brush walking up the hill from my right to its to the left and i just did a double take as i looked back like i was I, like doing this and i did this and i scanned back and i did that when i did that i didn't see if i looked like almost like a, a, a light gray like a light gray like a medium like a medium gray almost like this but a little lighter um and it was just wasn't running it was just moving uphill i don't know so when kyle first contacted me i could tell he was hesitant and when we got down here and started building that relationship i could tell he got a, got more at ease he became more at ease with how the whole team was and he kind of really relaxed and i saw that development throughout the whole week where he really kind of warmed up to us and the idea that we're here to maybe help him a little bit to get some more closure. And I really feel like that's what we did with Kyle. Hello? Hey man, how you doing? Good man, how are you? Doing good. Hey, uh, we just got back and didn't get a chance to review the game trail cams, but uh, I, I wanted to call you because we got a text message from, from Kyle, and when I read it, I thought it would be best if we just read it to, to if I read it to you guys as a group. Uh, okay. So, all right, so he says this. If Tony is reading this, that means I wasn't able to make it out tonight. We pushed our bodies to the limit, and I can say that the entire crew are more than enough to hang with any good old boys in this area. I feel proud of what we were able to uncover and curious about what we did not. This evening, I deleted my Facebook account that I used to join different dogman groups because I feel like I gained the real closure I needed back out where it all began in the Daniel Boone. I feel good in knowing Mother Nature has taken back over the area my first encounter took place and safe in knowing no one will ever be able to find that location. We tried as hard as we could with the time that we had. We left, we left buried bones in the dirt where they belong. I know old Slewfoot still remains in those hills and that's fine by me thank you all so much for helping close this chapter in my life i would follow you all just about on any expedition and who knows what the future holds after all we didn't really get to explore strange kentucky until next time guys in this life or the next hang in there like a hair on a biscuit <laughs> so um oh man he's a good writer yeah yeah you know he uh he really closed the chapter on this for himself personally and yeah. it really seems like us coming down and doing this with him really helped him have that closure and move on and uh i feel like all four of us made a connection with Kyle that's just gonna, it's gonna live on. And uh, I don't think this was something that was just done half-hearted for any of us. Right. Or Kyle. And I really feel like Kyle connected with us. And I think, I just feel like this chapter's closed in his life. And I think we helped provide that for him. And it makes me feel really good about that. Yeah. So, I just wanted to call and let you know about that, man. Yeah, man, I, I appreciate it. I think, you know, it, 
if absolutely nothing else comes from it, and I think, you know, I think we've had some weird experiences, but, you know, if, if we didn't get quite the, the hard evidence we were looking for, it's probably worth it. Um, you know, that, that text, I feel like that makes it worth it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. To be honest with you, I didn't come here for that reason. I came here to find Dogman. But the fact that we brought closure to a person who spent endless nights looking up Dogman and other cryptids, just trying to find answers for himself, it was an awesome feeling knowing that there was closure brought to that, and we also got a great friend out of the process. It was massive enough to know that it was big, but then it instantly stopped, and we didn't see like a trail of it moving off either. And I really feel like that's what we did with Kyle, and he even told us so, that he really felt like there was closure. And he absolutely appreciated what we did and gave me something to keep and hold on to from his grandfather, which is a little cross that his grandfather gave him and then he gave me to hold on to for whenever we go out on these journeys looking for these monsters in the woods. I really appreciated it and I know that Kyle has closure now for what happened to him so many years ago. That excitement and feel good feeling lasted for about four months. And then I get a text from Kyle that something felt as if it had changed. So last night, me, my wife, my daughter that's six, and my oldest son that's 10 was watching TV. We were watching, uh, it was on Travel Channel called uh, Unexplained Things Caught on Camera or Caught on Video or something like that. So then my daughter turns around to me and says, you know, I was listening to music in, in the bedroom at night whenever everyone was going to sleep, and there was something that had antlers that was looking through the window. And I was really scared. I was so scared that I didn't move, and I laid in bed until it went away. So then my oldest son says, that's called a skinwalker. And I said, Aiden, how do you know what a skinwalker is? And he said, well, I've seen one myself. I also seen it and I looked it up on Google with the description and that's what it came up. But on Google, it says that they're not real. So I never told you all. He then went on to tell me that he wasn't feeling good one night and his stomach was hurting. So he went to lay down on the couch and that's whenever he'd seen it looking through the window. And I said, son, why wouldn't you tell us if you've seen something that was looking at you through the window, a person or a thing, you always tell your parents. He said, well, Dad, it wasn't looking at me. It was looking at you. 